On July 16, 1995, French President Jacques Chirac ruled it was time that France faced up to its past, and he acknowledged the role that the state had played in the persecution of Jews and other victims of the German occupation. These black hours will stain our history forever and are an injury to our past and our traditions. Yes, the criminal madness of the occupant was assisted by the French, by the French state. 53 years ago, on July 16, 1942, 450 policemen and gendarmes, French, under the authority of their leaders, obeyed the demands of the Nazis. That day, in the capital and the Paris region, nearly 10,000 Jewish men, women, and children were arrested at home in the early hours of the morning and assembled at police stations. France, home of the Enlightenment and the Declaration of the Rights of Man and of the Citizen, land of welcome and asylum, France committed that day the irreparable. Breaking its word, it delivered those it protected to their executioners. A statue representing all deportees, but especially those of the Vélodrome d'Hiver, was inaugurated in 1994, and Chirac made those comments the following year. The statue includes children, a pregnant woman, and a sick man. They sit upon a sloped base representing the bicycle racing track housed in the Vélodrome. The words on the monument read, The French Republic, in homage to victims of racist and anti-Semitic persecutions and of crimes against humanity committed under the authority of the so-called government of the state of France. The Drancy internment camp became identified by the northeastern suburb of Paris in which it was located. It was originally conceived as residential apartments by noted architects Marcel Lodz and Eugene Boudouinas as a striking modernist urban community. The design was especially noteworthy for its integration of high-rise residential apartment towers, among the first of their kind in France. Poetically named La Cité de la Mute, or the Silent City, at its creation for its perceived peaceful ideals, the name became twisted with bitter, ironic meaning. The entire complex was confiscated by Nazi authorities not long after the German occupation of France in 1940. It was used first as police barracks, then converted into primary detention center in the Paris region for holding Jews and other people labeled as undesirable before deportation. On August 20, 1941, French police conducted raids throughout the 11th arrondissement of Paris and arrested more than 4,000 Jews, mainly foreign or stateless Jews. French authorities interned these Jews in Drancy, marking its official opening. French police enclosed the barracks and courtyard with barbed wire fencing and provided guards for the camp. Drancy fell under the command of the Gestapo Office of Jewish Affairs in France and German SS Captain Theodore Danecker. Five subcamps of Drancy were located throughout Paris, three of which were the Austerlitz, Leviton, and Bassano camps. Following the Veldiv Roundup on July 16th and 17th, 1942, more than 4,900 of the 13,152 victims of the mass arrest were sent directly to the camp at Drancy before their deportation to Auschwitz. The Drancy camp was designed to hold 700 people, but at its peak held more than 7,000. There is documented evidence and testimony recounting the brutality of the French guards in Drancy and the harsh conditions imposed on the inmates. For example, upon their arrival, small children were immediately separated from their parents for deportation to the death camps. A memorial was also constructed in 1976 at Drancy after a design competition won by Shalomo Selinger. It stands beside a rail wagon used to take prisoners to the death camps. The monument is three blocks 
forming the Hebrew letter Shin, traditionally written on the mezula at the door of houses occupied by Jews. Two other blocks represent the gates of death. Shalomo Salanger said of his work, the central block is composed of ten figures, the number needed for collective prayer, or minyon. The two Hebrew letters, Lamed and Vav, are formed by the hair, the arm, and the beard of two people at the top of the sculpture. These letters have the numeric 36, the number of righteous, thanks to whom the world exists, according to Jewish tradition. On May 25, 2001, the Cité de la Miette, former name of the Durancy apartment blocks, was declared a national monument by the culture minister, Catherine Tasca. A memorial plaque in memory of victims of the Valdiv raid was placed at the Bur Hakim station of the Paris Metro on July 20th, 2008. The Memorial de la Shoah, located at 17 Rue Geoffrey Lasnier in the Marais district of Paris, holds significant documentation and photographs in its archives and exhibits for researchers and visitors. The Parvis, or courtyard, is a gathering point bordered on one side by a wall bearing seven bas reliefs representing the persecution of the Jews, the work of sculptor Arbit Blatas in 1982. On its other side is the Wall of Names. On this wall are engraved the names of 76,000 Jews, among them 11,000 children deported from France under the Nazi plan for the destruction of European Jewry with the collaboration of the Vichy government. For the most part, they were murdered in Auschwitz-Birkenau between 1942 and 1944. This wall restores identity to children, women, and men that Nazis tried to eradicate from the face of the earth. Their names engraved in stone perpetuate their memory. In line with the Parvis, the bronze cylinder, which is an echo to the chimneys of the death camps, bears the names of the Warsaw Ghetto and of the camps, such as Auschwitz, Balzac, Bergen-Belsen, Birkenau, Buchenwald, Chelmno, Dachau, Majdanek, Mothausen, Sulbibor, Struthoff, and Treblinka. Upon leaving the Parvis and entering the main museum, there is a library with many books, biographies, comic books, children's books, and more on the Holocaust, the Nazis, anti-Semitism, and the history of the Jewish people. The Star of David in black marble, 
is the symbolic monument of six million Jews without a burial place. Here lie the ashes of victims gathered from the camps of Auschwitz-Birkenau, Belzec, Chelmno, Maidenek, Sobibor, Treblinka, as well as from Malthausen and the Warsaw Ghetto. These ashes were buried in soil brought from Israel on the 24th of February, 1957. A flame burns in the center of the marble star, perpetuating the memory of the departed. All around are parchment scrolls relating the suffering of all the Jewish communities in Europe decimated. The side walls are lined with cabinets which protect the volumes of the Book of Memories in which the names of the missing have been written. The back wall of the crypt bears a biblical quotation, Look at me, no one has ever had pain like mine. Young men and women killed by enemy swords. From Lamentations chapter 1 verse 12, chapter 2 verse 21. At the far end of the crypt, in an area ceded to the French National Archives, are found the police files on Jews from 1940 to 1944. They were placed here by the President of France, Jacques Chirac, in 1997. They contain records of all the Jews who were arrested, interned, hunted, and freed, established by the French administration of the Vichy government, and in particular, by the police headquarters. Past the crypt are displays of newspapers, documents, diaries, photo exhibits, texts, and videos relating to the history of Jews in France, the years of Jewish persecution during World War II, the history of anti-Semitism in Europe, accounts of Jewish resistance, and more. Also exhibited is a memorial of the children killed in the Shoah. The Memorial of the Shoah also houses the center of contemporary Jewish documentation. Here are reading rooms, meeting rooms, a multimedia learning center, an auditorium, temporary and permanent exhibits, a bookstore, and a cafe. The Memorial of the Shoah is a powerful and emotionally moving experience. It is a place to learn and to remember. Leaving the memorial, one must again pass through a set of double locking security doors. It gives the impression of being released, freed, something that most of those imprisoned in the concentration camps never experienced. These memorials and museums remind us of persecutions and crimes against Jews in France from hundreds of years ago up to the Holocaust under the Nazis in World War II. These are reminders of how easily a civil society can become uncivil, leading to genocide, as long as people allow it to happen. If we can remember, perhaps we also ensure it can't happen again. <laughs>